it's a scary story. Because <laughs> if he got it, any of us could potentially get it. It's uh, terrifying. And uh, speaking of terrifying, I uh, my flight from Los Angeles into Logan Airport, everything's going, everything's going fine, right? We take off from uh, LAX. You know, when you look down to the left, you see that little barrier where Marine Del Rey is, where Bravo Airspace is, you know, where the helicopters go 150 feet off the surface to transition the Bravo Airspace. We bang a left. We're climbing up, you know, going back over Hollywood. We're so high up, I can see over the Hollywood Hills. I can see into the valley. You know, I saw UCLA campus. Then you see uh, LA Coliseum went right over the Rose Bowl. And then right off into the Mojave Desert, flew right over Vegas. I looked down, I saw the stratosphere, right? Then you're into Utah, you go over the Continental Divide, the fucking Rocky Mountains, and there we are, we're out in the Great Plains. The food supply, everybody, that's where they poison it, right there. From the halls of Montezuma, God bless America, right? Flying right over our food supply that for some reason, some reason we're letting these poison it. Right? But the fucking ones in the suits over here, it's okay. It's okay. Spray the big casino all over it. Keep the bugs off it. Fantastic. Ah, just rinse it under a faucet. You'll be fine. Anyways. Hey, feed that cow some more cow. Um, cut the beaks off them. So you fly over that shit, right? Then, I don't know, by then the sun started going down and everything was fine. And, uh, you know, I was working on writing some stuff and I was shooting the shit with this guy. And uh, he was telling me he's got this room. He has a, he's got a garage, right, with a room over it, which is my dream fucking house, man. I always wanted to have an old house with a d- detached garage with a room over it. I already told you this shit. I turned the upstairs into a drum room slash cigar bar slash hooker lounge slash sports bar. Like every man wants, Right. Um, <laughs> so he basically had that minus the hookers, minus the cigar bar, minus the drums, whatever. He had this fucking pool table and all that shit. So we were having a great time. Just a good guy shooting the shit with. He wasn't coughing. He didn't seem like he had a bowler. It was a nice time. So all of a sudden we, we started our initial ascent, descent into the Boston area and, um, we're out over the fucking water, you know? And all of a sudden we're, we're just doing like this circular pattern. I think we went north of the city, up by Newburyport and Marblehead. And we're just doing like this fucking circle. And we go around and we go around again. And I'm thinking, uh, this is a holding pattern. This seems really low. And uh, the guy comes on. He's like, we're having a uh, little mechanical issue. We're going to try to work it out. And uh, we'll be on the ground shortly. But I love that. We're having a, me- we're having a mechanical problem. Uh, but we expect to be on the ground shortly. That can be taken two different ways. Either we're going to fix it and I'll be able to land this fucker or it's going to be a catastrophic failure of something, at which point gravity is going to take over and land this plane for us, right? Right into somebody's back deck there. Um, So long story short, um, I wasn't even paying attention. That's the weird part. I wasn't nervous at all, which was another weird thing. So uh, he comes on the fucking thing. And we're going in for the landing. And he said, uh, okay, we're going to begin our initial descent to our final whatever, blah, 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 Logan Airport. Uh, Just to let you know, there's going to be some emergency vehicles on the runway. There's nothing to be concerned about. This is just standard procedure. It's like, what the the fuck you mean? It's nothing to be nervous about. They brought out the fire trucks. I know what this is for. This is in case we're all covered in jet fuel in eight minutes and we're on fire. At which point you can't really save any of us. You're just preventing this airplane from burning down the rest of the airport as we cartwheel down the fucking runway. So anyways, long story short, there was a flap that was stuck. Um, Somebody said it was stuck up, but we had to land faster than normal. So I don't think it was able. I, I don't think it was moving. You know, don't you go flaps down or whatever to slow the fucking thing down when you go to land? Isn't that what all these years of flying? I believe that that's what happens. Um, But whatever, we had to land faster than uh, probably what you're supposed to. Probably outside the envelope, as the pilots say, 
landed. Not, it didn't even land that hard. You know, and everybody in the back applauds. Nobody in first class applauds, you know, because they don't have any souls, uh, including myself, you know. And uh, so we land and uh, we pull over whatever. And it was, uh, it was pretty fucking awesome. Pretty awesome feeling knowing that the guy was that good. That he basically just prevented us all from dying. I guess they all do it every time they land it safely. But uh, to be able to kind of handle that, I just can't imagine being that pilot up there. The only like comforting feeling I would have was you, you'd have more concern for the people in the back than you did for yourself. So you can kind of stay relaxed and just be thinking, I have to keep my wits so I don't kill these other people. But other than that, what a, what a responsibility. Can you imagine that? If I fuck this up, I'm going to kill 350 people, you know, and then even worse, whenever, you know, a plane goes down, they examine it. And if it comes down to being like, even though that was a mechanical situation, you know, at some point they try, they put it on the pilot insurance company. So, you know what? It was Chucky's fault. Ah, he fucking wore the wrong kind of shoes and uh, he's pushing too far right. Rudder. Right. They'd figure out something somehow to blame it on the pilot, you know, so they can kind of keep the lawsuits <laughs> at a minimum. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. So whatever. Um, this guy landed us there safely. Thank fucking Christ. And uh, so I've been back here in my hometown for the last uh, since Friday. And I've been I've been pretty good. I have not. uh I have not hit one of my old uh, eating haunts because I put on a little bit of fucking weight there as I was sitting in the writer's room writing F is for family or, or pitching jokes as the writers write it. And, um, you know, you know the deal. I get like 5'10 outside the fucking zone and I, I stand in the mirror and I fat shame myself. I give myself a little fucking halftime speech. You know, what the fuck was that today? You know, and then I, <laughs> I get, I get myself back on the stick. So, uh, I'm telling you all this shit that I say, despite the fact I don't know any, know anything about nutrition or I know very little, I'm telling you my tricks fucking work when you just can't stop yourself and you know, you got, you want to eat a large pizza and you fucking know it. And you know, you shouldn't, you're actually stepping outside the craving, you know, to be like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Do not shove that fucking wheel of shit down your throat. Walk away. All right? Drop the fork and walk away. Right? You know it. You know what you're supposed to do, but you can't, that, that craving, that sugar salt fucking craving, it's just having, it's like you're not even controlling your body. You walk over there. That's when you just have to fucking override it with common sense and order a fucking salad. As quickly as possible, shove that down your fucking throat. And immediately, not immediately, take about five minutes, your levels, whatever that is, that craving levels off because you're full. It fills you up. And then you look at that pizza and you go, what the fuck was I thinking? Why the hell would I ever do that? So I did that to myself. I made a game plan before he even left. Um, I went to the airport and they had one place you could actually get a salad, right? And I fucking shoved that down my throat. Before I got on the plane. And then I got on the plane and then I was fine. And I had a banana for the flight. Shoved that down my throat. I kept pounding the waters to keep the stomach full. And at one point I had to give in. I, I, bought, I got a fucking whiskey. And, uh, and then that was it. I was like, all right, I did a great fucking job. And then all of a sudden the plane broke. And I was like, ah, fuck, I should have got the Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is it too late to order some food? Um, keep the drinks coming there, sweetheart. Um, but whatever, we ended up fucking landing safely and, uh, I'm back on the stick. Landed, banged out my fucking hundred pushups, right? And the next thing you know, the next night I'm doing a gig and before I go on stage, I'm doing pull-ups with Lenny Clark. All right. That's the kind of dedication you have. So all you fucking assholes out there telling me about your metabolism, go fuck yourself. All right. You know what you're doing and you know what you need to be doing. All right. You're fat. It's not a fatal disease unless you fucking stay that way.